The views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL. However, you are urged to like and share them on Facebook. It's time now for the African American scene presented each Wednesday evening at this time by Howard Insurance in Port St. Lucie. The African American scene is hosted by your friend, the one and only Rudy Howard. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I don't know how I could top that. Always good to be with you here on a Wednesday night. Boy, I'll tell you what. Uh, I almost don't even have to do much work anymore to come up with topics for the show each week. Something seems to happen every day that makes a great topic on this show. Jesus, <laughs> I'm telling you. It's like unbelievable. Uh, well, let me, let, me, let me first say, last week we talked about taking a knee. Yeah. And Steve was at it and we were going at it and I think we ran out of time so I, I want to get back to that again uh, there were some questions he asked about crime and I'm, I'd be more than happy to, to deal with some of those issues first though Tiki Torches did you know in Charlottesville this past weekend they had another Tiki Torch March with the alt-right. Hmm. Haven't heard anything about that, have you? Alt-right, like as an alternative, right? <laughs> Is there an alternative to right? Alt-right? Well, yeah, there is an alternative to right. Wrong. <laughs> that is a hell of a, that's a hell of a uh, identity when you think well, about it. When is right not right? When it's left. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's just uh, the lighter side of it all tonight. Buckle your seat belts for tonight's show, folks. It's about to get good, right, yeah. Rudy? Oh yeah. So, uh, I want to know all you folks that are so upset mm -hmm. about NFL players taking a knee. Were you upset about the tiki torches in Charlottesville again? Probably not. You're focused mm -hmm. on the knee thing. Yeah. And, and, and you know, c before the show came on, Cliff and I were just marveling at why this has become such a big issue. It is absolutely bizarre and insane to me that this has become an issue, and it's become a racial issue. Which is really bizarre. I think it's being disguised or masked as a racial issue. Because from being, I've got a lot of experience on both sides of the spe spectrum. I go over 50 years in the faith spectrum. And, uh, well, quite a few years now in the logic spectrum. Yeah. Faith and logic is divided in this. What is, from either side, uh Pro, uh, being against taking the knee, we know it's a non-faith type of person that would be offended by that. But I'm a non-faith person, and I'm not offended by it. I marvel at the fact that people are actually demonizing taking a knee it like is, it was bad. Uh, it is, like, unbelievable. It's a logical uh, alternative, you know. Uh, to well, and, and, you know, here's the point that gets lost. They're not accepting the concept of why they're taking a knee. And, and, and I want to get into that tonight because I think that's so important. And, and you know, I, I have uh, on my Facebook page a link to Montel Williams, mm -hmm. and we all know who he is, super patriot, retired Army officer. He gets furious at people for criticizing the young men taking a knee. He said he wouldn't do it. He raised his hand to serve his country. And he said the thing that really ticks him off is all these people talking about their patriotism and taking a knee, they haven't served one day in the military. Not one day. And they become indignant that it is uh, an, an insult to me. How do they come off as being insulted? At, and I am a veteran, 
and they did not raise their right hand and swear to protect the United States of America. Boy, I saw that, and I went. I sent that to a, a conservative friend that we both know, and I have not heard back from him since then. Uh, I sent I sent him that. It was a video clip of about four minutes or so, and he gets emotional in there about people criticizing the people that take a knee. And then I'm going to tell you something before we go, we're, and we're going to get into that because I. I don't know. This this is kind of getting me the way uh, the healthcare is get getting me. I, I, I there's no logic to me for this craziness about the taking a knee. But let me share this with you that happened today. Uh, Representative Al Green of Texas excoriated the president in front of his fellow lawmakers. And here's his statement today. Donald J. Trump, president of the United States of America, has undermined the integrity of his office with impunity. Green said he has betrayed his trust as president to the manifest injury of the American people and is unfit to be president and is impeached pursuant to Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution of the United States. Mm. Now, there's a little strategy that went on here. He did not go to the second part that would have required a vote from the congressional members. Uh, he left that blank, so he didn't have to put uh, Democrats on record for the vote or Republicans on record for the vote. But it is in a situation where he can bring it up later. How about that? And then one of the big donors of the uh, Democratic Party, Tom Steyer, has stated and he's given he gave $100 million in 2016, he has stated that he is expecting candidates in 2018 to run on the idea that the president should be impeached. Very interesting. Hmm. I don't know how far that's going to go, but listen, I said it before. Somebody called me up. They wanted to make a monetary bet which is out of bounds, but I'm going to say it again. I don't think he'll be here on January 1st. I think it is getting so hot and so heavy with the investigation, and I think the thing that's going to bring him down more than Russia is his monetary dealings with his businesses while being president. That is is going to get him. Hmm. I feel really confident that he's crossed that line, he's danced, and he's danced on the line all of his life uh, as a businessman, and there's things that he expects uh, people to do who are uh, working for him. Can't fire Congress. No. <laughs> and, and, well, actually, let, let, here's the biggest problem that he has. He cannot understand that Congress is not his employees. They're employees of the American people. So he gets pissed when they don't do what he wants them to do and that they stand their ground on a specific issue, such as uh, the case with, with, with Tillerson. Mm -hmm. Tillerson has not been agreeable to his uh, statements. And needless to say, Corker has just been like over the top with uh, statements about his inadequacy as president of the United States. And boy, I'll tell you what, I know some of you out here will disagree with me from here to eternity 
And if you want to call, that phone number is 340-1590. That's 340-1590. But comparing Donald Trump to Barack Obama, oh, my God. What a... uh. The comparison I see is the opposition and criticism. Uh, I think Trump is getting some of that same... I call it presidential hatred because George Bush suffered from it. Barack Obama definitely got a lot of it. Donald Trump's getting a little bit of it, uh, not more than he could handle. Yeah, oh, yeah. Barack Obama, that's a pretty tough dude to take all that crap for all that long time. Listen, I've said this before, and I will say it again. Barack Obama is twice the man that I am because— some of those things that uh, he had to endure, I would have punched somebody out. There's just, there's just no question about it. I, w- I would have punched somebody out. I put myself in that same position with the, with the same uh, concern. <laughs> yeah, it's just some of the stuff that was said to him. Oh, calling his wife a gorilla in high heels. I tell you Ooh. what, Michelle Obama was one of the hottest first ladies that I ever set my eyes upon, and I'll admit that any time. Yeah. Because it's the truth. She And classy, too. She was so fine, I wanted to kiss her daddy. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We got Winnie on line one. Hey, Winnie. How you doing, Ruth? How Yeah. Okay, but, uh, please. Uh, okay, yeah, but, uh, Donald Trump getting impeached, but the vice president gonna be better than him. My friend, so he gonna be better. Uh, I asked you this before. He, is he, he is fifty something years old? But he, is he gonna be better than Donald Trump? So, uh, no. <laughs> I was just wondering. Well, uh, I know. I, I well, listen. I know you love Donald Trump. I mean, you've. Yeah. You've, told, you've told me that over and over. I, I get it. But here's what yeah, yeah, I... Let me, let me tell you why I think the problem is. He is dancing with the devil. As, as old Christian saying, he's dancing with the devil because he has all of his businesses intact, making money, And he's using the presidential office to make money. Now, there's going to be people that's going to call up here and disagree with me. And I don't care if you disagree with me or not. But he's using his presidential office to make money. Even so, it's guilt by association. Okay. And so my my question is going to be, he's the only one that I know of that's ever done that. Now, there may be some back in the day that did that. But that's out of bounds. Mostly every other president put their assets and businesses in trust as they became president because of the Monuments Clause. Yeah. But that's that's just my opinion. Yeah. Well, I said that the vice president is going to be better. It's going to be better than Donald Trump. I, I, don't, I didn't understand what you said. It's the vice president. Okay, is Donald Trump going to be impeached? They people that want him be impeached. Well, okay, if he loses presidential, they, 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 is the vice president going to be better? But he's going to have to take over, right? Oh, yeah. Well, the, the vice, vice president, president would, yes, he's going to yes, have to take yes. over. Yeah, the vice president would take over, yes. Uh, is he going to be better? You don't know. I, to be honest with you, no, I don't think he's going to be a whole lot better. But I at least think he will be. Oh, this is a tough thing to say. I'm not going to say that. I, oh, I, I at least think that he will have a a different level of reasoning than our current president. But you want to hear something real scary though? If something happens to the vice president, the presidency <laughs> goes to the Speaker of the House. Yes. Oh, uh, Speaker of the House. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, she, she loved herself some Donald Trump. She always has. But, you know, it's okay to respect an office. Yeah. You know, and uh, 
But it's not illegal to criticize when they, when you see no, something wrong. Not, you know? not at all. Not at all. So I, I, I would just tell you that uh, So that happened today. In Congress, uh, Representative Al Green introduced articles of impeachment, but he didn't follow through so as to make him to force a vote. So very interesting. Mm. Uh, now, let's let's here's something I, I posted on Facebook. And I have gotten a lot of feedback on this. And I'm going to give you I'm gonna give you a chance because I've gotten some very interesting answers. Mm -hmm. And I think I really uh, persuaded people, some people to give a different thought to how they think about people. Here's my statement. What if we were able to remove all the people on public assistance, the people you think that are dregs, that are just leeches on our system? So let's talk about who those people are. Dishwashers, hotel employees, fruit pickers, golf cart workers, bellhops, all of them now have magically, through the magical powers of Rudy Howard, are no longer on public assistance. What are you going to do now? Ooh. So tell me, what are you going to do now? Are these throwaway people? Do they bring any value to us as a country? Think about it. They vote. <laughs> think, think about it. Think about it. I, I had one guy, hardcore conservative, called me up and said, I'm not sure what to do about that, but that doesn't sound like a very good place to be. And I said to him, I said, well, at least I got you there. You don't think that's a good place to be? Well, I agree with you. How would you like to live in the United States of America, and none of those services were available to you. You go on vacation, there's nobody to clean your room because most of those people are on public assistance. Fruit now is costing you $15 a pound uh, as opposed to what it costs you today. Is that going to be okay with you? Uh and you go to a restaurant, there's no dishwashers even to stack the dishes in the automatic dishwasher. <laughs> what? When you're sitting there waiting to eat and you got to wait for clean plates because there's nobody back in the kitchen. Is that because they've gotten rid of the 40-hour work week for a lot of people and they're working part-time now? Oh, yeah. A lot of that. Yeah. A lot of the culpritism is in there, yeah. Yeah, so... so my point is, you mindlessly, I'm, a cri I'm criticizing some of my conservative friends now, you mindlessly think the answer is to kick everybody off of public assistance and make them get a job. Okay? Like that's going to work, right? Force compliance? <laughs> that's not America. That's not freedom. But Well, what first, point? First, first of all, the, here's the reality, and, and, and you know why I, I bring this up. It's not going to happen. All right. There's going to always be people that are going to be dishwashers, that are going to pick fruit and work in hotel rooms, and that don't make them bad people. Oh, no, we need those people. <laughs> yes. We need them. Yes, that, it's, that's, that's the big secret. We need them. You want to go out to eat? On dirty dishes, right? Yeah, no, right, you don't. right. These are important people. Yeah, you just want to sweep them under the rug, though, right? That's what well, I, th I think the, the way the way my conservative friends talk about it is, go get a job and lift yourself up. Well, doggone it! You know what? It's a it, nice dream. It, yes, if you're a fruit picker, for God's sake, they bring a tremendous value to to us as a country, because the cost of fruit would be sky high if you didn't have them. You got to work real hard to collect fruit for a living. I'll oh, boy. When I was a kid, I tried it. 
You did? You know those four-by-four four foot bins that the oranges go into? They were paying $4 for a four-by-four four foot bin of oranges picked from the trees. You know how long it took me and my buddy to fill one bin? In fact, the whole day, and we didn't quite fill it. Made $4. And there's folks that come in there, and they can pick those trees clean and do four, five, six bins each a day. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I know. There's a there's a uh, movie that Kevin Costner's in out. You know the one I'm talking about. What's it called? It's it's something it begins with an M. Uh, but anyway, he he works with these Mexican kids and he turns them into a uh, championship cross country team. And one of the things, and he's in the process of trying to uh, engender the confidence of the parents and the kids. He takes a day to go out and pick vegetables. His butt was so beat up <laughs> by the time oh, he got man. to noon, and they were laughing at him. You know, the kids were laughing at him. He said, Coach. They weren't being disrespectful either, I'll bet. I'll bet you it no. was just plain funny, though. It was because, funny to them because yeah. he had no idea. Yeah. yeah. Just like the people that are listening, yeah. they have no idea how hard that is. Yeah. And then you then you'd say, go get a job. Well, you got people out there living on trust funds that are criticizing the poor people. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So, you know, <laughs> that's that's I and, and I, I posted that and I got a lot of feedback oh, on that. Yeah. So let's 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 get back to taking a knee again. Let me tell you I don't know what it is that you don't get about taking a knee. Taking a knee is no disrespect to the flag. And I even have a very good Democratic friend who he and I disagree on this. And and I consider him a good friend. But, but he's a retired military guy and he loves the country, as I do. But it has nothing to do with the flag. It has nothing to do with not loving America it has to do with putting a spotlight on injustice. Now, you say, well, what do you mean? Uh, and I'm Because I'm going to tell you what kind of happens. Something you don't see. I, I got a chance to get an up-close personal look at how the media and the television can influence one's thoughts about who black people are. About, well, I guess it was 10 or 12 years ago, Brenda and I agreed to take a student for Christmas uh, who was in college, who couldn't, he was from China, okay? Mm -hmm. And he stayed with us for about six weeks. When Claude came to my house, he walked in the house and he looked around and he said, what do you do for a living? I said, <laughs> I said, I work. What kind of job do you do? You got a pool in the back of the house. I said, I, me and my wife work. Was he shocked? <laughs> yes, yes. What, what did he not know when he walked in? What did, he, did he assume anything? You yes, he did. <laughs> he assumed. We could break that down and find out what assuming really means, but we won't do that. Yes, but, yes. But it's true. Yes. <laughs> He thought I was a drug dealer. Oh, that really? <laughs> yes, he did. So he said, you mean to tell me that you and your wife work and you own this house? And I don't think my house is anything spectacular. I do have a pool, but I mean, it's nothing spectacular. But in his mind, now watch how implicit bias oh, works. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. In his mind, there is no way a black man could have a house like this uh, with his wife and son and dog, and it be legal. You get that same thing from some of the callers on this show, Rudy. Yes, I do. When, when you start talking about health care and stuff, and you yeah. get highly criticized. One guy asked me, where did you hire this Rudy Howard from? I said, <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, but uh, Rudy Howard owns an insurance company, and he's authorized to talk about insurance because he knows all about it. Plus, 
He pays for the airtime. This is his show. And, th- and this guy was livid because Rudy has, has a show. He's not an employee of the radio station. No. <laughs> He's not an employee. He he has his own show here. Now, some of you folks that really want to get on the criticism and stuff, pay for your own show and come on in here and do this. Can you? Yeah. Rudy, all of your enemies just uh, started uh, listening a little differently suddenly. They, they, and, they, they and need so to t- take a look at your perspective a little bit just to understand <laughs> what's going on, you know? So, listen, and you know one of the things I did at the time I was president of the chamber. Uh-huh. So... I said, okay, Claude, you're going to go with me today. So I had a chamber meeting, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I go into the chamber meeting, and of course, you know, I'm, I'm the only black guy in there. And, and, uh, and so he's sitting there looking around, and I'm conducting the meeting. And so after we come out of the meeting, he said, you were in charge. I said, yeah, I was. You ran the whole meeting. I said, yeah, I did. He's still surprised, this guy. Yeah, he's like, he's still like, he's in shock. He was like, a black guy was in there coordinating activities with all these white folks. This is not the 60s anymore, friends. Right. Wake yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, so Everything like, has changed. <laughs> so, so when we came out of there and we got in my car, he said, okay, I guess you did buy your house and all that stuff legitimately. I said, wow, I'm glad I'm glad you finally came to that conclusion. You didn't even have to tell him all the boards that you're on. No, I didn't even have to tell him that, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, so I said, but I thought that was, so, so why do I tell you that story? That is, I tell you that because that is how injustice happens. Yeah. Implicitly. Not explicitly. I don't think that every single cop that shoots a black person is a racist. Uh, Not for one minute. Now, there's I may have some friends that think that, but I don't think that. But I do think that people have created ideals in their mind of who black people are. And so they react to that as opposed yeah. to uh, accepting that person for, for them just being a person like them. So if, 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 so if I have all my life been told, uh, and, and I've had this too in, when I was on the corporate side, mm-hmm. I've had, I had one guy that when I was the manager in New York and when I was the claim manager in New York, I had uh, I had 80 people, three assistant managers and 17 supervisors. This guy hated my guts. He hated my guts. And it just, and he was one of my supervisors and it just galled him that I gave him orders just it just he could not handle that and he was a white guy he just could not handle that well and all why the, all the races he grew up around taught him he learned the hatred from them and then he finds out he he sees the light and and it's too bright for him at first and it takes a while yeah to well break what it what, he, what it is is i couldn't possibly be smart enough to run this operation. Bad you, assumption. Yes, sir. When you're, when you're dealing with somebody who might be smarter than you, right. never <laughs> assume anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? So in his mind, is like, nah. That that's just just that's just not not possible that he could run and and we moved up the ladder and we became number two office in the country. And and he still was hating me. And eventually he had to leave because uh, you know, there was a couple times when I said, oh, no, you're going to do this because that's what I want you to do. And he would turn beet red. I said, no, you don't have no choice. You're going to do it this way. This is the way I want it done. And and eventually. And you're not talking about him doing something unreasonable. No. It was part it's of his work. job, right? Yes. Yeah. 
so you know, hey, but that's that's the way it goes. So so I tell you all that to say, implicit bias can have a profound effect on what people think. But but here's what I want you to also consider. Here's what uh, most of the NFL players feel. And I know this because uh, I was an athlete. When athletes play together, you got white guys and black guys, they come together and they are on a common mission and often learn more about each other than the common man does. Because they're team members. Yes. It's a team yes. effort. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, so they, a lot of the things that they may have had in their mind about who I was disappeared because I was their teammate. And they were ready to go down into the trenches with me because we're on the same team. Mm -hmm. So that's part of what it is uh, that we have to learn as people. Now, now let me let me let me say this also to you. That is important because what the players seek is fairness. Like uh, one of my conservative friends who's probably listening tonight, he and I had this unbelievable debate about Michael Brown. And his position was there didn't need to be any trial or anything. Uh, He was just a thug. Just being a thug doesn't mean it's okay to kill you. (laughs) And and looking like someone who you think is a thug isn't good reason to kill somebody either. Yes, that's right. So, I mean, now, and my point to him was on that is you probably could have avoided that Ferguson fiasco if he had just went to trial. And my position was I didn't think necessarily that he was innocent, nor did I necessarily think he was guilty. But what I did think is that it was deserving of a trial. And a lot of these situations, which is why black folks are so upset, they don't even get a trial. You know, you get video evidence that a wrong has been done and there is no uh, legal remedy for that. How, how can that be? Even if you got a, uh, an innocent verdict, yeah. you would have at least had the opportunity for a trial and you would put down a lot of unrest when people think there's an opportunity for there to be justice. Now, what happened in Rodney King's case, when you saw that on TV, I would bet you 80% of the people in the United States, I'm talking black and white, would have thought those cops were going to get indicted. And there was nothing. Wow. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, you saw it right there. They were beating the heck out of him, laying on the ground. And then that, that guy that was driving the truck through there uh, uh, in, around that time period, the white guy, they pulled out of his truck and beat the heck out of him right there on the street. That was wrong. And the cops. That was wrong. Where were they? You know, The, co- and the cops were standing on the sidelines there. That was, wow. that was horrible. Okay, so, so that's part of what, what, what uh, taking the knee is all about. Uh, again, the phone number is 340-1590. We're going to take a break. And I'm I'm looking for your feedback. You all are kind of quiet tonight. I guess I... We t- touched a nerve there. Yeah, I got you. I put you back on your heels. You know, they're not worried about being perceived as a racist tonight. They're, they're being perceived over this uh, demonizing taking the knee. That's where <laughs> that guilt monster inside of them is, is roaring right now. So... We invite their call. Their opinions are appreciated. Oh, absolutely. Please feel free to call. Disagree with me. I love it when you disagree with me. And don't you touch that dial because this is the African-American scene. We'll be right back. 
The Howard Insurance Agency in Port St. Lucie reminds you every year around this time, there's what we call the annual open enrollment period, which begins October 15th for people who receive Medicare. It's a time when you should review your plan, make changes, and switch to another plan if you choose to make those changes. There's many cost-saving options. It can become quite confusing. That's where the Howard Insurance Agency can help. Call Rudy Howard at 343-9878. If you have Medicare insurance questions, he'll be glad to help at no cost. At the Howard Insurance Agency, they offer a wide range of insurance products like homeowners, auto coverage, and business insurance. So for all your insurance needs, call Rudy Howard of the Howard Insurance Agency, 343-9878. That's 343-9878, serving the entire Treasure Coast. With offices in Port St. Lucie at 600 Southwest Darwin Boulevard. Visit online, rvhoward.com. WPSL Treasure Coast Weather This Hour is brought to you by Seacoast Air Conditioning. I'm CBS 12 meteorologist Kate Wenzel. For your Wednesday evening, we'll see partly cloudy skies, a 30% chance of some scattered showers with a better chance of rain as we head into Thursday. Thursday morning temperatures will be in the mid-70s to start, warming up into the upper 80s with a 60% chance of rain during the afternoon. Mostly cloudy skies, breezy too, with winds out of the east-northeast at 10 to 15. Then for your Thursday evening, we'll drop that down to a 40% chance of scattered showers and storms with overnight lows in the mid 70s from the storm truck weather center at cbs 12 news i'm meteorologist kate wenzel weather this hour is brought to you by seacoast air conditioning your hometown air conditioning company since 1982 for repairs or a whole new system call 772-466-2400 comfort crisis don't roast call seacoast we now return to the african-american scene once again here's your host rudy howard and we have Gary on line one. How are you, Gary? Hi, Rudy. How are you doing today? Okay. The um, uh, I would just like to say, I, uh, I'd like to talk to you about taking a knee. Okay. And where where I stand. Okay. My my thoughts on it. Um, I don't doubt that there are <clears throat> uh, injustices. Uh, towards black people. We've seen them on the TV. Um, you know, the senseless shit. Oh, I'll just pick the guy in the car uh, oh, yeah, as a, for that, instance. That's the big um, one. You yeah. know, how, how no one is standing trial or, uh, you know, I don't know that all the ins and outs of it, but that, that to me, as, a, as an outsider looking in, that, that to me is a blatant crime. Yeah. Yes. Um, but I'm, <clears throat> I'm really now quite annoyed about the whole taking the knee thing and okay. the, and and I'll, and I'll tell you why all right the reason i'm annoyed about it is because i think you know that there is a genuine argument and a case for the inequality that is shown um that you know that rises to the surface but i'm really annoyed now about them t- about the taking the knee thing because the um it's been lost in the noise the whole argument has been lost in the noise about not standing for the national anthem. So what I think um, was originally started with good intent, um, now, you know, all anybody talks about on a Sunday is taking the knee. Nobody talks about the racial injustice um, that, 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 that those people uh, who were um, killed at the hands of the police, um, you know, as it's that's been lost in the whole argument and i just wish that they would stop now um and you know use a different vehicle to uh promote their ideas and uh you know seek justice for those people that have been um wronged well gary here's the thing uh I, I appreciate you uh, making that statement because I think what what we're de- dealing with now is diversionary tactics. So they, they, they talk about other things to get away from the issue at hand. And, and what really people want is they want to feel as though you care about them 
as much as you care about people taking a knee. I've heard people say it. They go, you know, they're upset about them taking a knee because they think it's disrespectful to the country and disrespectful to the flag. But I don't hear them getting upset about Philando Castile sitting in his car and getting shot while he's in there with his girlfriend and the baby in the car for what appears to be no reason at all. Yeah, I, mean, I, I watched the video. I don't think that, you know, um, that it was justified. But, you know, I wasn't there. But uh, And I understand what you're saying. But do you not think that the the whole question or the whole issue now has been lost because, you, you know, uh, you turn on Fox News and all they're talking about is kneeling. You turn on MSNBC and all they're doing is talking about something else. And no one in the media is talking about the issue because the issue has been lost in the noise except to those people um, that care about the issue. And those people that care about the issue aren't... Uh, I, I hate to say it, but there aren't enough of them to, you know, to make the protest work. Well, I, oh, I think there is, and I, and I think what Roger Goodell did the other day and what Jerry Jones did is he's forcing the hand of the players. And, and, and you know what? I hate to say this, but what would they do if all the black players in the NFL decided they weren't going to play anymore under those conditions? What would they do? Well, I think that's – do you not think that that's why they um, – Goodell issued the letter and Jerry Jones made the statement? Oh, yes, I do. The, I do. You know, because, I mean, it's a huge business. You yes, know, I do um, think that's why. And I, uh, you know, I, I don't know what the number is. Something around seventy percent of uh, the players in the league are uh, not white. Uh, you know, so <clears throat> I mean, it would have a huge, uh, it would have a huge impact on the, you know, on the business model. But do you think that it would, you know, change anything? Yes, it would have to. Because this is a capitalist society, and if and if all of those players decided, I, I will tell you, here's a, a thing that happened many years ago. Most people don't even know anything about this. Back when there was still a lot of segregation, they were going to an uh, NFL All-Star game, and uh, the members of the AIF, AFC, I believe it was, were not going to be allowed to stay in the hotel that was associated with uh, the game. Right. They refused to play. That All-Star game got canceled. <laughs> mm. That made a huge difference in how the hotels treated the football players going forward. Now, it, it, it initially, uh, and I can recall this as a, as a young kid, what happened was they were way they were way open to the professional athletes like the football players and basketball players, but that opened the door. And when that door opened up, and they saw that these black guys could get on the plane, and they weren't monsters. Then they all of a sudden, oh, what's the difference? Not, not, you know, their money's green. So it, it made a difference. Well, right. you know, it's not about black and white. It's about green, Rudy. It's yes, about the green. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and you're right. It, I, 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 I want them. That You know what, Gary, that's part of my frustration is that it's been a diversionary tactic to talk about the knee without talking about the why. Uh, right. You know, so. But anyway, thank you. Yeah. Ref, thank but, you for calling. I mean, in. yeah, they just look at the, um, you know, the whole anthem thing and disrespecting the flag. And I, and uh, I just wanted to say one other thing. Okay. I listened to you last week, and um, and uh, you you got pissed at the caller <laughs> um, when when he brought up Chicago, and and I 
I'm, I'm, you know, I don't want, I don't want to upset you, but the, I think what he was trying to get across was that, that you know, that there's these, um, you know, murders in Chicago, or you know, whichever large city it is, um, and you know, no one says anything about it, which is just, which is, which is just um, as equal a cause, you know, as people taking the knee. And I, th- you know, um, I thought, I think, I think that's what he was actually trying to get across. I, I think that he, I think that he might have been uh, trying to do that, but, but here's the issue I have with that those guys shooting each other in Chicago is horrible I oppose it but they don't have badges and guns and have sworn to protect the public oh I know yeah that that makes that different and they're not representative of people in other cities (laughs) yeah right And, 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 and everybody says Chicago and and that irritates me because they act like uh, Chicago is the only place where large numbers of black people live, uh, and they hold that up like, okay, look at this. Well, I think that's a that's a false idol. Right. But thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for calling. I agree. Good to talk to you, Rudy. Good talking All to right. you, Gary. And we've got Jay on line two. Yes, Jay. Jay. Hello. Yes, Jay. Could you hear me? Yeah, you're on. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm glad. You know, it seems like it's a part. What they do with the with Chicago, it's like uh, they use that. That's like the talking point on Fox News. That's they. You know, so you can tell people <laughs> that gravitate to Fox uh, News and get their talking points, and that's they use that. So, what about uh, what, what happened there in uh, Las Vegas? Who who, who did all? Who killed all those people and wounded five hundred? Yeah. That goes in Chicago, and that looked like a white male to me. Yeah. It seems like all these mass, all these mass shootings, are mostly white males shooting and killing up a whole bunch of people and a whole bunch of kids, and it really doesn't matter to them. Statistics like they point get, to you know, serial killers. Got to hold all these guns, and they think that having a a, 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 weapon, a military weapon, assault weapon, uh, I guess it's an extension of something that they don't have. So they have to, you know, <laughs> do what they think they have to do with this assault weapon and. And you're talking about Castile, the man, the young man that was shot by the cop in, I think it was Minnesota. Uh, yes, he was trying to explain to the cop that I have a, a, a permit for my gun, and I'm going to show you my you know, permit. Where's the NRA when a man had a legitimate right to carry a gun and he had a license for it? An open carry state. That's a good question. And he, and he was trying to let the cop know that, you know, that he had a you know, permit for a gun in the car. He didn't, he didn't have to tell him, but he did. And the cop just blasted him away. Where was the NRA to defend, it, defend his right to carry, to, you, know, you know, the Second Amendment right? They're always preaching and they're crying and they don't want to do anything. They really don't want to do anything about this assault, about that, that, uh, the thing that you can attach to the, to, to the, to the, the M-16 or the, um, the assault weapon to make it into a, a machine gun. Bump you know? stock. Yeah. Bump you know, it's, just, it's just amazing that they sit around in Congress. And you know what they were trying to do in Congress? Before before this happened in Vegas, they were trying to have sil- where people could get silences without right. even having to you know have uh, any kind of a, you know a background checks or nothing. They yeah. wanted people to have silences. Could you imagine if this guy had a silencer hooked onto that, and they they would never have heard the shot or saw where it was coming from? Hey, they, and this, he probably would have killed a lot more people. They did. So away this is with where we're going, they, and, they, and sooner or later the they people did away with stand that. Up. They did away with that real fast, Jay. Though, didn't they? Yeah, they did it real fast. That was on the agenda. I see a lot of people, they don't talk about that on CNN. That was on the agenda before this thing happened in Vegas. They were, That's what they were, They had, one of the bills. They were going to try to run all this stuff through yep. because they have the majority, but they didn't care about the ramifications of what it, what it meant, you know, or what it would have silenced. So silence is only supposed to be done, you know, it, it, that, that's, that's what the mobsters use, you know. That's what people are trying to, you know, kill people without knowing where they are and all that kind of stuff. It's just so, it's just so crazy. But I want to get back to this, the NFL. Now, you know the thing that's really so, so sad about this. Des Bryant, he's one of the star players on the Dallas Cowboys. He said about a week ago or two, he said he didn't, uh, he didn't want to protest because he has uh, a family to feed. Now, I, I, go, I have a throwback to Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson was the first to sit – would not go to the back of a bus during segregation days. He, he was in uniform. He was a, a lieutenant in the U.S. Army. 
in uniform, and he refused to sit in the back of the bus. That was before Rosa Parks. And then when he got on the Dodgers, when he was the first African American to play baseball, he, I think it was in 1947 was the first, you know, when he played with uh, the Brooklyn Dodgers, Branch Rickey uh, hired him. Uh, I think it was 49 when he uh, he wouldn't stand for the for the, uh, the anthem because of all the racism and stuff that was going on in the United States and all of the second class citizen, you know, citizenship and all of the things that were going on, the Klan and everything. So he just was protesting that and he was one of the, this was in 1949. This was one man. He was the first African American in there, so you know he was he was under a whole lot of stress and uh, death threats and everything else. And Des Bryant today got all of this money, and he's the, he, and he doesn't have the backbone to stand up for what, what is right in this country with all of these police shootings. And all we want is this justice, you know, uh, the justice system to, uh, to to correct itself and make sure that uh, everybody has equal justice, like that sign that says on on the Justice Department building, "Justice for all." You know, that's what it's they, they got to stand. That is what it says, Justice though. Department yeah. building. Huh? And that's the end of the pledge of, of allegiance, too. Yes. And justice yeah. for all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's all. Yeah. Well, anyway, Rudy, just for, ooh, for thought for all your, for the people listening to the radio that always want to bring up Chicago. You know, yeah. Just think about all these mass shootings all over the place. And cow, that's, use that as a, a barometer. Okay? <laughs> yeah, that goes right good with the Take other care. barometer. All right. Thank you, yeah. Jay. Take care. All right. Okay. You know that other barometer, the one says, Rudy, you're pulling the race card again. You're pulling the race card. <laughs> you're pulling the race card. <laughs> And that's the other one. <laughs> well, you know what? Listen, my 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 sister has told me before. She said, when your phones are really quiet, mm-hmm. the way they are tonight, she said, you got people out there thinking. Yeah, you you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You can lead a man to to wisdom, but you can't make him think. Yeah, he has to do it himself. Yep, 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 wow. yep. Well, I I have to tell you, it was uh, it was good. It was a good evening. Oh yeah, and I am not. Coming back to take a knee next okay. week. That's Rudy, for sure. Over the years, there have been people that stayed on their butts when it was uh, time for the national anthem. Nobody has anything to say about that. Yeah. But yeah. when it's the knee, it's something deeper and bigger that uh, is trying to be dissed, I guess. Somebody just doesn't yeah. like that for whatever reason. That's all. Well, I would like to thank you so much for tuning in to the African-American scene. God bless and be safe, and I will see you right here next Wednesday for the African-American scene. If you like tonight's show, sometime tomorrow, this program, as a video, will appear on YouTube under WPSL-TV. All righty. The African-American scene, Wednesday nights in the 6 o'clock hour, only on WPSL Port St. Lucie. It's one of the many reasons why we are the talk of the Treasure Coast.